Hey guys, so here we are, minding my own business last night at about 3 in the morning. Uh, the only reason why I was up, by the way, is because I was recording my uh, my summon video for Zamasu, and I was literally like up in my bed, about to fall asleep, and uh, yeah, this thing pops up at 3 in the morning. 3 a.m., my time. Uh, so, yep, got up to translate it, and uh, obviously was not able to make a video uh, when this dropped, when the info for this dropped, because it being 3 a.m., I had to get up in about 3 hours for work, so... Now that I'm home from work, I can make a video. So, here we go. LR, Super Saiyan God Goku, Int. Um, I'm not going to go through translations, because you guys can feel free to pause it here. This is what I did, my translations for the card. Uh, you can pause it if you want. But the first thing I want to talk about is the leader skill. So, this is like... I don't know if it's like an, a, a power creep. I wouldn't really necessarily call that, call that, because it's not uber powerful. It's just interesting. So, we have Pure Saiyan's and hybrid Saiyans. Basically like the mixture of a mixture of two different categories that we thought might never be under the same like leader ability. So it's kind of weird, right? Like <laughs> who would have thought that there would ever be a card that would lead pure Saiyans and hybrid Saiyans? It's, it's kind of weird. So I don't know, for me this kind of opens up the doors for seeing a bunch of different possibilities in the future. Like what if, I, I, I have no idea, like what are some categories that people would never think could be combined like we could bloodline pure saiyans maybe <laughs> i don't know dragon ball saga and uh, time travelers i don't know wacky stuff like that i feel like we could actually potentially start to see that stuff now now that this is out in the open like pure saiyans and hybrid saiyans is very unique and um i don't know it's just this by itself com encompasses like 70 percent of the game plus so it's a very very like all-encompassing leader skill, basically. Like, this is very close to just saying all types, key 4, 130%. Obviously, you're going to be missing, like, a lot of the extreme types, because most of them are not Saiyans or Hybrid Saiyans, but, again, most of the game is Saiyans or Hybrid Saiyans, so... Very, very good leader skill. Um, I've actually seen a lot of people say that they think this guy's underwhelming, um, and that might be what people think just on, off the first glance. Let's go actually read the passive. So attack plus 77%, not the best. And I feel like people see this and they're immediately put off by that. Uh, and what this reminds me of is when these LR Super Saiyan 4 units were first revealed, they also had like seemingly pretty weak passive skills. And traditionally in Dokkan, we're used to seeing um, like most of a unit's power level come from the passive. Uh, so w when we see a passive with only this amount of attack, it's, it's sort of off-putting. So I think a lot of people are seeing that, and they're, just, you know, their minds are just instantly going like, "Oh, okay, well, that's that's kind of underwhelming." Let's just keep reading. So he gets keep plus one, max of five, and then defense plus one, eleven percent, max of fifty-five percent for each pure Saiyans or hybrid Saiyans category ally, excluding this card. So you're gonna have to run this guy, and then the other five uh, allies on your team are going to have to be either pure Saiyans or hybrid Saiyans to get the full boost. Uh, and then this is the part that's the most uh, important. High chance to evade enemy attacks, and high chance to perform a critical hit for 7 turns from first appearance. So, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys right now, this card was not designed for longer events, such as Dragon Ball History, such as the Legendary Goku event. This card was designed for Dokkan events, Super Battle Road, and you know, if we ever end up getting events in the future that are like more like Super Battle Road, that are they're like multi-stages multi, multi stages that you just go through like on the map, this guy's going to excel in those because he's, he wants the fight to end within seven turns. So, and I think that's fine, right? P people started criticizing units for not being good in the Legendary Goku event because it's quote-unquote the hardest event in the game. But I mean, <sighs> units that are tailor-made tailor, tailor for the Legendary Goku event are obviously going to be very good against it. Same thing against Super Battle Road too. Like it's fine to have units that are made to, you know, destroy one or the other. And like, I think we're moving in a direction right now with Dokkan, uh, where we're going to start seeing units that are, um, like zeroed in on clearing specific events more so than you know LR Kion Khalifa that just do everything, LR, or LR Gohan and Goten that just do everything. I think those are the exceptions, and we're not gonna. I don't think we're gonna see units like that as much anymore. I think we started to see that with Gohan itself. Okay, so I think this is the most important part of his passive, uh, because this alone basically turns him into a much better LR Trunks. And I actually have LR Trunks pulled up right here, because I think he is the unit that we can use to compare the most to this new God Goku. 
Uh, so first, let's go ahead and take a look at his links. Godly power, warrior gods, caught my mouth, super saiyan over in a flash of shattering the limit and legendary power. So when you compare with LR Trunks, LR Trunks mostly has key links. So he has these four, which are all key links. He has cold judgment, which is defense, and then legendary power, basically, it's, it's basically nothing. I don't really count this as anything. And then super saiyan is pretty much his only attack link. So 10% attack he's getting from the super saiyan link. Take a look at this guy. Uh, Godly Power is a 15% attack link, Warrior Gods is 10%, and then Super Saiyan is 10%. So he's getting 35% um, attack from his links if you're able to activate all three, which you are. I'll get to that later. Um, so even though he has a lower you know, passive boost of 77% than this Trunks does, because this Trunks is 120%, uh, it's going to be relatively close when you factor in this as well. He greatly raises attack for three turns. Uh, so this can stack twice, I believe. So you, you super attack with this. And then the next turn you super attack with this again, or you can even do the 12 key one, and it'll still greatly raise your attack for one turn. So basically, you're, what you're doing is you're greatly raising your attack twice with this, whereas Trunks only raises his defense. Um, and before we go any further, I just want to also say that this Trunks is still a very, very good unit. And I think if this guy came out today, people would look at his passive and be like, "Wow, that's terrible!" Like attack 120%, high chance for critical. That's it. Like it's one sentence. Um, when in reality, he's still a very good unit. Like, especially paired up with the EZA uh, physical trunks, uh, this, the uh, Father Sangalica trunks. So, I don't know, like, I think the fact that this god coup is like, I feel a direct upgrade from this trunks in pretty much every single respect is not a bad thing at all. Um, so, I mean, even if, uh, and also, I'm gonna, on top of that, I'm gonna add that this god, Super Saiyan god Goku, I don't believe he is going to shine offensively like, to the same degree that we've seen from other LRs recently, I feel like this guy is going to be more so, a, like, a great defender. Because greatly raising your defense for three turns, and then also being able to do that multiple times, adding on to the fact that you get a 50% chance, I'm, I'm assuming that the high chance here is 50%, it's not, like, basically whenever it says high chance, it almost always means 50%. He has a 50% chance to dodge from the first for the first seven turns. So that on top of this, assuming you have the you know the the full uh, the full passive active, fifty five percent defense, plus this, he's gonna have close to like one hundred fifty thousand defense, like on at, at the rainbow level, I guess, with a fifty percent chance to dodge. That's really good. That's much better than this trunks defensively. This trunks doesn't even have defense in his passive. He doesn't have dodge. He only has this, and this guy's defense is actually not terrible. Like, right, I'm, I'm sure you, a lot of you guys have had the opportunity to use this guy by now. Like his defense is not terrible by any means, but compared to this guy, this guy's gonna have way more defense than Trunks is. And it's possible this guy even hits harder than Trunks. I don't know if it's, I don't know if he will, but it, it'll be close for sure. Um, now, obviously, the only stipulation with this guy is you need to obviously have a team built around him specifically, but I don't think that's very difficult to achieve. Because pure Saiyans and hybrid Saiyans, like I mentioned earlier, are most of the game. And I actually have here pulled up some of the uh, categories that I think will be good for him. He's on, he's on four. He's on Pure Saiyans, Goku's Family, Kamehameha, and Realm of Gods. Goku's Family and Kamehameha are very similar, so I'm not going to uh, differentiate between those two. Pure Saiyans, he obviously can fit on. Pure Saiyans is ridiculous, has like every card. <laughs> and then Realm of Gods, I think, is the team he's going to shine on the most due to the links that he has. So Warrior Gods and uh, Godly Power. Because that is 25% extra attack he can gain. So the question then becomes, what are you going to do for his team on the Realm of Gods? And I actually threw out an idea yesterday on Twitter where I mentioned, oh, what if you ran UI Goku, you ran Transforming Goku, Evolution Blue Vegeta, Transforming Vegeta, and then like uh, Kaioken Blue Goku or something. I don't know, whatever else I said, um, in order to activate its full passive. I think instead of doing that, I think the smarter thing to do is instead of activating that, I think you actually do want to sacrifice one of these slots in order to make your leaders a Masu. And the reason why I say that is because would you rather have 20% more... So let's go over to this Masu real fast. So would you rather have 20% more HP and attack or 11% more defense on one unit? And I think the answer is pretty obvious. So I, what I would do is I would definitely run Zamasu as the leader, sacrificing that one slot where he does not get that one bonus, so he's going to be getting key plus four and then defense plus 
And then I think you go Turles on the team, because he does count towards this part of his passive with the Pure Saiyan. So I think that's fine. That's what you want. And then you can also use, uh, I believe for his first linking partner, there's two options that you can do. There's Blue Kai Ken Goku, and then there's this Vegeta. So Blue Kai Ken Goku probably is the better option, uh, just because he's a better unit than the Vegeta is, but it, we'll get into the Vegeta in a second. So this guy shares Super Saiyan, Warrior Gods, Kamehameha, over in a flash, and that's it. So that's three links. So he's giving him three key, Kamehameha, which is basically nothing, 10% attack, 10% attack. So he's getting 20% attack and three key, which is pretty good. Not, It's not bad. Uh, and then Kaioken Blue himself is actually a very good unit too. So that could be a decent linking partnership there. So this Vegeta, I believe, is probably his best linking partner in the game, this uh, Goku. Um, he has uh, Godly Power, which the Kaioken Blue, Kaioken Blue Goku doesn't have, which is an extra 15% attack. Super Saiyan over in a flash, Warrior Gods. So he's giving him 35% uh, attack and then 3k. So basically he's just giving him an extra 15% attack uh, as opposed to this guy. But I think this guy, probably you want to run him because he's just better in every respect than this guy is. This guy does stack, but so does this guy. Um, it's tough to say, um, but I do think that this guy is not underwhelming at all. Uh, he's probably going to be hitting close to... I don't know. His attack is probably going to be over two, over three million um, rainbowed, and then plus you have the 50%, the fifty percent chance to crit, with the fifty percent chance to dodge, with like one hundred fifty thousand events at rainbow level. Is that the best? Definitely not. Is he the best LR in the game? No. Is he top five LR? No. But is he is he underwhelming? I don't think so. Um, his, his SA animations are very cool. Um, that's really all I have to say about this guy. I mean. Um, let me know if you guys are excited to summon for this guy. He seems pretty good. I mean, for Super Battle Road, he's definitely going to be able to destroy it pretty easily, I assume. Um, especially on the Realm of God stage, where there's like 100,000 enemies. Um, you know, obviously dodging against that many attacks is going to be preferable. So, I don't know. To me, he seems pretty good. I definitely don't think he's underwhelming at all. Uh... When you compare him to someone like LR Trunks, who's still very good, usable in Super Battle Road, usable in Legendary Goku event, with with actually no defense in his passive at all. I mean, to me, it, this guy just seems good. I don't really know why people are saying he's underwhelming. Um, he seems fine. So anyway, that is probably going to wrap this up. A uh, little bit of a shorter discussion video today. Usually my discussion videos go on for a little bit of a longer period of time, but I feel like I was accurately able to convey what I wanted to say about this guy. Um, if I if, I mean, this, obviously I don't play JP, but if this guy were coming to global, I would be summoning for this guy because he seems really cool. Um, animations, again, are very cool. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you guys are summoning for this guy, if you guys are excited, I know we have heroes coming up as well, so it's kind of like, do I want to summon for him or do I want to, want to wait for the hero banner? I feel like you could just wait for the hero's banner to see what it's like because this banner will definitely still be up by then. Um, and you then, and then once those, uh, once both banners are up, you can then decide what you want to do. But that's going to do it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one.